All right. Okay, I'm not going to admit anyone else. Um, if you guys can help keep track of that, I'd really appreciate it. Thank you so much. And uh, you guys, you all know that our guest tonight is very special. I'm going to try to rattle through a little bit of information before I um, introduce her. Uh, because it's our two-year anniversary. Oh! It's our two-year anniversary. I think that's pretty cool. Um, and I'm really, really excited for all of us. I think it's the coolest thing ever. Um, and I prepared a few notes because I didn't want to forget anything. It's also Sage Susan Rothman's birthday. Happy birthday, Susan Rothman, our health professional at ER Shred. We love you so much. And we hope you had a great birthday. You certainly do a lot for us. And she always gets, she always gets mad at me because I call her Sage Susan, but she's my sage. And you guys should go look up the definition of sage. If you don't know what it means, when I thought of Susan, I was giving everybody nicknames. So I was like, Coach Jesse, like that just works for me. He's like my coach, <laughs> right? And then it's like Chief Shreducator, Heather Siegel Leonard, like that's that works. I was nicknamed Captain Caveman. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing, but it's okay. I'm going to roll with it. Um, and Jesse thinks it's the funniest thing ever because he's like, <laughs> I don't know, because he loves to tease me. But Sage Susan, it just works. It just works, Susan, because you're always there for me like that. It's our two-year birthday, and I wanted to reminisce for a moment about everything that we've accomplished um, all of us collectively. And so let me put this on speaker mode, speaker. Um, some of the things that I thought about was uh, the, the protocol itself, the nutritional dietary protocol that we started. And, you know, it was cool because it was born of a real personal experience. It was born of a health crisis. And so for me, it kind of became um, it was like a lifeline. It was like someone literally had pulled me from the dead. And I remember having this feeling of, oh my God, what can we do with this information? What can we do? How can we help people? How can we help the world? And I remember I just kept saying to Crystal, like, I just know too many people who are good people and they're trying like I was and they think they're doing everything right. And they're, they're spending all the money on the supplements and they're trying to hit the gym every day. And, you know, they think that they're eating the way they was taught to be healthy. When in reality, um, it's, well, as we know, things aren't always what they seem, are they? And so with that in mind, ER Shred was born as a result of all the people we hope to help. And it's just turned into this incredible thing. Um, and we kind of, all of us kind of pinch ourselves from time to time, like, holy crap, like just the way it started and the early, um, the early people who came on board, the people who came on board and said, you know, hey, I can help. I, 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 let me offer up this. And they was all true blue ER shredders. Like it wasn't like people saying, hey, you know, let me help you and you can pay me for my services. It was just more so like people started showing up and saying, you know, this is what I'm good at and let me help you. That's, that's how it started. Um, and I just can't believe how it all came together. Um, and, it, it, and it makes me feel humble and it makes me feel grateful. And it makes me feel like, you know, there's really good people out there in the world. And I don't know if you guys know this about me, but at the same time, simultaneously, I've never really shared this with you guys, but at the same time I was suffering from a, a health crisis, I also was very jaded. And I really had lost hope in humanity. Um, you know, I, I had these renters in a rental property of mine, and I gave them every benefit of the doubt, and they hurt me badly, and they cost me a tremendous amount of money. And I got to the point when I realized that they had repeatedly lied to me and manipulated me, and I, I, I went really dark on humanity. And I remember my mom saying, Sean, boy, wow, like you've really gone dark. And maybe that even contributed to the health crisis that I, that I did suffer. 
but I'm grateful for it all because the experience, everything that, that has come to be over the last two years, including what I feel is a tremendous amount of, of personal growth on my part, was all born of all of this. I wanted to um, also point out that the new changes, the blueprint, the changes that we've made in terms of you go baseline for three weeks, you, you go to your blueprint, you learn to intuitively start to build your own you know, dietary blueprint. And from there, freedom and empowerment is born and you start to live the shredder lifestyle. I just, I know that those adaptations are, um, they're inspired. And I know that the, the reason that they're inspired is because I know, I know the intent where they're born from. We don't want to cater to the diet mentality. And we don't want people to be held hostage by a number on a gravity, gravity reading called a scale. We ultimately want to empower people. And if that scale serves as a motivator for you for a period of time, I'm all for it. But what kind of, uh, of a dietary protocol ultimately is encouraging its most fierce followers to shatter their scale? <laughs> Think about that. That's crazy, but that's kind of how we operate. And if you if you can get on the call tomorrow night with Jesse James Jamnick, um, it's the you know shred your it's the shredder lifestyle call. And I want you guys to get on there, and I want you to think about these things that I'm that I'm telling you. Think about what is the motive here, what is the intent, what are they trying to accomplish? What 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 is it? Is it weight loss? Is it marketing? Is it money? What what is it? What's the motivation? If you were on last week's call, um, then I think you'll know that our, our motivation is actually quite sincere and it's quite pure and, um, and it's working. And I, I think you should get on tomorrow's call as well. Um, living the Shredder lifestyle tomorrow night at, uh, what is that? 5 p.m. Pacific. And Jesse puts it on his wall and he puts it on the group in the group. So um, make sure you guys get on there. And then, you know, the other thing is just results. You know, we talk a lot. A lot of us that are the most involved in this, we talk a lot. And we talk about the stories, the individual stories. Um, we talk about the people. And it's almost like these people are heroes in a movie. And we're watching this movie. And we're cheering them on. And it's almost as if we feel like it's a real life movie and, and it, they are a literal superhero. And for me, and I know I speak for the board and everybody else, the hearts, like it is the most gratifying thing that I've ever experienced professionally is watching people overcome. We all love those stories, overcomers, the people who push back, the people who take back their power, their control, and then they forge their way moving forward. And I got to tell you, some of these results we've seen, if, if it was just that, I just want to say it because I, I want to make sure that everybody understands. If that's all that came of this was, let's say, a handful of stories like Kathy Martinez, Sarah O'Bannon, uh, Mimi Terrell, uh, Bonnie Stahl, if there was just a handful of those, you know, but we don't have a handful. We have like, buckets full. And I hope all of you know how important you are to, to us. And I hope you all understand why it is so meaningful. And, and I'm so proud of you. I'm so goddamn proud of you. I want you to know that, that you guys are overcomers. You guys, <laughs> I mean, you're mad shred warriors. You're badass. We love you. And please keep bringing it. See, in the beginning, we had this, this concept. It was bonfire remember remember the bonfire concept and it's like oh there's so and so over there with their little bonfire and it gets cold at night and then there's so and so over there with their little bonfire and then oh we got oh there's a little group of people they got a little fire and so and so has a fire oh there's someone with a little squirrel fire and even though i was this top distributor st distributor in isogenics i always felt like my fire it wasn't big enough and then what happened was I actually, um, <laughs> I had this, this funny thing happen to me. ER Shred was born and it was like, it's not good enough to help 
Sean and Crystal with this. That's just not good enough. I love the people of Isogenics. I'm grateful for Isogenics. I owe a lot to Isogenics. And then it dawned on me, oh my God, we should just open it up and help everybody. So then the notion was formed. Okay, we're going to start a bonfire. We want everybody, no matter where you are, no matter what team you're in, uh, no matter, you know, what, anything, come. And if ER Shred appeals to you, the, the lifestyle, you know, our, our tribe, the way we operate, anything about it, whatever, if it appeals to you, if you find it a fit, come on, bring your, bring your wood over here, chuck it on the fire. Let's make this thing bigger, brighter. Let's all get warm. And the cool thing is that as you add logs, the fire does indeed get bigger. And as a result, everyone on the peripheral, everyone out there that's got their little fires, they're like, damn, that looks like a lot of fun. They got Mimi Terrell over there singing songs at the campfire. <laughs> and I kind of wish I was getting that warm because this little fire I've got isn't keeping me that warm. And it's not to diminish other people. It's more so about collaboration. It's about um, cooperation. It's about tribe. It's It, it matters. Um, I've learned that community matters. When I lost my community in terms of losing my religion, I had an, an immense realization that community is very important. And that's why I pride myself on building community and valuing community. It's it's my thing. I just love it. With all that said, I'm just very grateful and very proud of what we've accomplished. We've never promoted money. Think about that. We really haven't. Overall, we haven't. Um, I asked Shred Ambassador uh, Bob Sibright to brush. You know, I put constraints on him. I says, just brush over the business. And I think that was a hard dictate. I really do. And uh, I owe Bob a tremendous amount of gratitude for everything that he did, for all the wonderful um, guidance that he gave me, all the consulting that he offered me. The guy is genius when it comes to business and when it comes to, I mean, God, when it comes to a lot of things, he knows a lot and he offered so much support. So with that, I want to honor Bob by giving him the title of Legacy Ambassador in ER Shred. And what that means is that I want Bob to just forever go down as one of the people who originally helped form and launch the ER Shred and get it off the ground. So Bob, we love you. We appreciate you. You're amazing. Um, thank you for all you did. And you did a tremendous job. And you carried us for a very long time. So thank you. But we never really promoted the money, if you think about it. Um, we have a lot of things right. We have so many of the pieces that are in place. Um, we've dialed in the culture. We've dialed in the community. We've dialed in the education. We've dialed in the support. We've dialed in, um, I think, our communications even and the, and the way that we um, consistently put out information and consistently support our tribe in that way. I just... I even heard Jackson Parr, who's a tremendous leader in our industry, and he actually paid us a tremendous compliment. And he said, I saw what they were doing for their team. And I said, he said something to the effect of, I felt like, holy bleep, how are they doing that? And it almost made me feel as though I wasn't doing enough for my own team. But guys, that's what's so cool is ER Shred as a collective it's not Sean Escobar. It's not Sean and Crystal Escobar. It's not Sean and Crystal Escobar and Jesse Jamnick. Like, if you guys don't know that it's all of us, then you're not listening and you're not paying attention. It's all of us together. And that's very important. And that's the way the culture has to remain. So the financial incentive, I want to touch on that. And I wrote some notes down so that I do Alexis justice. As I think about what Alexis brings to the table that is most unique, it is the combination that she has dialed in around the financial opportunity. 
kind of like a combination on a, on a safe that possesses all kinds of riches. And you desire to access and get, get into that safe. Why? Because those financial incentives can indeed better your livelihood. That safe will not discriminate in this business model. If you know the combination that unlocks that safe, you can access it. Anyone with the combination can access it. It will unlock for you once you know the combination. The breakdown in our industry is that people like myself, we crack the code, but we're ineffective at teaching that combination to other people. And I would say that I have been ineffective at teaching that combination to other people. Like us, Alexis has had the realization that her call is to help the entire company of Isogenics. I think that that is a sweet spot that she finds herself in. We're talking about that bonfire concept. Alexis is a true blue ER shredder. And the announcement that I have for tonight is that Alexis has graciously offered up her unique talents, skills, systems, and strategies to our tribe to assist all of us in furthering our cause of getting it out there to more people and helping our most, our wonderful tribe access that money that they so desperately desire for their livelihood which is not a bad thing, by the way. Financial incentive is very important because how many shredders have we had come and go who had the most incredible results? But because the financial incentive was not shown to them or because they were not taught the way to access that financial reward, they lost interest only because they couldn't justify the amount of time or energy minus the financial incentive. So Alexis, I speak on behalf of the ER Shred Board and all the ER Shredders when I say thank you. Um, we are grateful for you coming on board with us and we come on board with you and it's this beautiful, beautiful synergy and partnership. I personally believe that building tribes is far more effective and rewarding than just marketing products. If I were to pick uh, one person in our entire industry who is qualified to guide this ER Shred tribe on this journey of accessing the money we so deserve and we need, if I was to handpick one person who I know was the right vibrational energy to fit our culture, it would be Alexis Romano. Why? Because she actually cares about the people. She hopes to serve people. How do I know that? Well, I can tell you it's because I have observed her for years and I know her mentor, Carol Taylor, on a very personal level. It's also a feeling I get when I talk to Alexis. Her team is a lot like us. They're raw. They're real. What you see is what you get. They swear. We swear. <laughs> we have um, dialed in almost every element of this equation, you guys. And we figured it out. We can all have different roles to play. So, for instance... We have something figured out in terms of the results and the protocol and how to support the community and the culture. We have that dialed in. We hold on to people. People feel very much a part of a family. That's because we care. Now, Alexis knows what the hell she's doing on this other end. <laughs> now, at the beginning, it might be there might be some transition in terms of the way that information is presented. I just want to put this out there. 
And Alexis agreed, we all have to be flexible. Uh, that means that, you know, her team, she's already got a monstrous team, an existing team. She's far more successful than I am. And I respect her for it. And so we can't put constraints on other people or, or other teams or other leaders. ER Shredders, we keep trying to teach these concepts culturally of tolerance, acceptance, scroll on. I just want to say that if anything in the training or anything in, you know, any content language, if any of it doesn't suit you or fit you, here's the beauty of it. You're not obligated to do anything. You're not obligated to adopt or adhere, you know, anything in particular. What I would recommend that all of us do moving forward is employ our own critical thinking, our own intuition, feel, and then decide if you are willing to try something. But what we don't want to do is we don't want to push back. Pushing back is a knee-jerk reaction. I know. Try to open up. Try to be open-minded and consider that there are people that actually know what they're talking about. Alexis Romano really does know what she's talking about. So I want to make sure that we're not, you know, the person who was invited to the party and then <laughs> we make a fool of ourselves. Guys, we have to be gracious. That's my plea is that we be gracious and that we don't be that individual. <laughs> we don't want to dump. We don't want to complain. ER shredders are tough. We suck it up. Ain't that right? We suck it up. We do hard things. We move mountains. We're fierce. Um, with all that said, <laughs> I love you guys so much. And I'm so excited. It's our two-year birthday. Thank you. Um, Alexis Romano, thank you for your patience. I know it's not appropriate to keep the guest speaker waiting that long. Are you out there? I'm here. Can you see me? Because <laughs> I'm on my phone. <laughs> What's up, a... Alexis? How you doing? I'm great, Sean. How are you? I'm great. I'm great. I'll tell everybody why they should have such mad respect for you. This is the kind of person who I, I called her the night, like the very night that that hurricane was hitting. Uh, I called her and she's like, oh, the hurricane is hitting. She's in the middle of the hurricane. And I'm like, oh, no, no, no. Let's Let's talk later. Let's talk another day. And she's like, I'm just sitting here waiting for this hurricane to pass by. I was like, hey, man, if you're willing. So how are you doing? You, I'm grateful you're on. Sorry to keep you waiting. Oh, that's quite all right, Sean. I was listening to, to all the, the goods that you had to offer. So I, um, I have a lot of respect for you as well, as oh, you know. Thank you. And I mean it. I mean it when I say if I was to handpick one person. And that, for me, tells me that this is all fate. As far as I'm concerned, it's just all fate because a lot of different things had to happen. Like you had to get an ER shred result, for instance, and you did. How's that going? Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in a rabbit hole of, of information. So uh, yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's quite amazing. I, I feel, I can't even tell you. Well, you know, I feel so much better. Like it's, it's, it's crazy. So um the creepy I, thing is it gets better go ahead yeah i was gonna say if i could eat meat after 37 years people can do it anything right <laughs> that's right so alexis um any thoughts or feelings on and anything that i said well yeah i um i appreciate you saying we have to keep an open mind because um i mean i wouldn't be in we wouldn't be here right now if I didn't have an open mind. I mean, it took me a long time um, to, to admit that while I was doing all the right things for my health, I still wasn't feeling well. And I'm like, oh, well, all right, I guess this is just what it is, right? And so you keep plugging along. Um, and then, you know, being exposed to your information and your group. I, you know, in my mind, I'm like, I'm not, I'm going to eat meat. Like, like all of a sudden I'm just going to like throw down a burger, uh, you know? So, and I, and I, I had to, I had to, um, humble myself and I even apologized to my mother 
like for all of the things I told her not to eat <laughs> for all these years, you know? Um, and I had to say like, I was wrong, right? Like I was wrong about a lot of things. I, I fell into a lot of the lies that, that we were told. I went to IIN, a, a nutrition school, and, you know, I fell for, you know, all of it. And, you know, 2020 opened my eyes as we talked about last time. Um, but, you know, I had to humble myself and say, uh, my brother, Joseph, I said, I post, posted the video of the, the bacon in the, in the group. Yeah. Right. I mean, my brother sends me pictures and videos like that all of the time. And I'm like, please stop. They're gross. Right. Now I'm like, Joe, how do I cook pork belly? <laughs> It's awesome. And we're so grateful. You know? We're grateful that it unfolded um, the way that it did. What I wanted to I hope to start with was your story around how in the world you got involved in, in this industry. And um, I don't think everybody knows just how amazing, you know, what, what happened to you around this industry and your success. Um, do you mind going there and, and just kind of sharing some of that? Yeah, sure. Um, so I was in education for 21 years, had two and three jobs. Um, my vice principal, who was a friend of mine, came back from summer vacation, looked completely different. Uh, and I wanted to know what he was doing. And he told me he was doing this cleanse. And I was like, okay. Um, I had done the master cleanse, which really ripped me apart. Uh, so I was like, I don't know if I want to do another cleanse. And he's like, it's nothing like the crazy thing you did. Long story short, um, he sold me a nine day um, and I paid cash for my products and the box was on my desk and I did it with a colleague of mine who I'm still friends with, um, who's still on Isogenics. Um, and, uh, you know, day three, I felt completely different and I was like, I was hooked. So, um, yeah, and I, I mean, I told all of my friends and my family before I even knew there was a business. So, um, so what, yeah. So what, what unfolded? Um, yeah. Keep going, please. Yeah. So, I mean, I really wasn't, I didn't come into isogenics for the business. Um, however, I've always, I never um, had a, an issue around money, making money. Um, can't buy things if you don't have money, can't help people really. If you don't have, you can help a lot more people if you have money. Um, and I, I just wanted a better life. So I waitressed, I tutored, I cleaned houses, like you name it, I did it um, to make extra money. My father was an entrepreneur, barber. My, my mother worked two jobs. My father worked two jobs. Like it was just in our, you know, in our uh, family that everybody worked two jobs. It's just what you did. Um, and so when, I was presented the opportunity of the business. I was like, eh, no, not really. And they were like, well, you're, you're actually doing it anyway. So they invited me, um, actually, to, I don't know if you remember, do you remember Dennis Katopoulos? Mm -mm. Do you remember? One? Okay. So Dennis and Mark, they were in uh, Cameron's downline, Carol, obviously everybody's in Carol's downline. Um, and they came to the high school to explain the business. And I'll tell you what, um, I mean, they sat there for hours, which was, you know, probably not duplicatable, but what I got from them was their genuineness. They really cared. Uh, and they invited me to the event. And I went. And that's what changed everything for me. That event changed everything for me. What was the event? It was a super Saturday in Mawa, New Jersey. Cool. And um, yeah, they, uh, I say this all the time. They saved me a seat up front and I sat in the back by myself because I'm an introvert. So people, when they say, you know, I can't do this business because, you know, I'm not very outgoing, you know, that's not true. If you have a strong why. Um, but what I saw was a teacher on stage sharing his weight loss story. And then he shared his financial story. And I thought, wow, well, if this teacher can do it, like I can do this too. And then I just kept going to every event that being at a job where it was, you know, 21 years in education and it's very, you know, 
political and, you know, a lot of BS. Um, it's never about the kids. <laughs> so I was like, I was just done. I was burnt out. Um, and so when I would go to an event, I, my energy, everything shifted, my mindset shifted. And I, I remember saying like going to an event on Saturday and then being sick to my stomach on Sunday, having to go to work on Monday. I'm sitting at my desk on Monday and thinking, God, how could I be at this amazing event with all of these people? And then I'm back here. And I just didn't want to keep going back there. Right. It just wasn't. Serving. And I wasn't serving the kids anymore because I was really unhappy. Got it. Got it. Okay. So how your success in, in this opportunity how would you def how would you explain that? Did it happen right away? Did it uh, did you have to find your way? Not, yeah, no, not at all. It didn't happen right away at all. <laughs> um, I remember saying to Cameron and Carol Taylor, like, when when am I going to actually make some money? <laughs> like, you're just laying the foundation. You're planting the seeds. You're laying the foundation. You're planting the seeds. And I was like, okay. And I just trusted them. I trusted them because they number one had the success that I wanted and number two they were just caring they were just caring people um and they didn't complicate it for me um you know I well and I'll get into the systems in a second but I I built my business in bite-sized goals I did not come into isogenic saying I'm going to be a millionaire like no I just didn't want a waitress Wednesday Friday and Saturday nights anymore like that was my first goal and how long did it, did, did it take you to, you know, to get there? Do you recall? Um, it took me, well, let's see. So one cycle is $54, right? right so right. when I hit, that was like my Wednesday night, right? And so, I mean, I, so I would make what, like maybe $200 on a Friday, 200 on a Saturday, but like 50 on a Wednesday. And I would work, you know, God knows seven hours for that $50. Um, so when I, I think maybe, well, it's funny, funny story, but I, I would say about um, a year and a half. Oh, I love this. Cool. 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 So, and yeah, that was, that was like what, 10 cycles a week or something like that. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm trying to figure out what, what you were saying you'd made it, in waitress. Yeah, it took me two years to hit one star. That is such a cool story. That is very encouraging. Okay, that's good news. So one star yeah. being 10 cycles a week, right? And it took you two years to accomplish that. Yes. Okay, then what? What 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 happened from then? Well, um I well, I said if I could do this, then I could replace my tutoring income. Right. And so when I replaced my tutoring income, then I was like, okay, well, I want out of education. So I focused on replacing my full time income. And for me, at the time, I actually was making six figures um, in education, which is you know, not typical, but I was in a pretty crappy district. I mean, dangerous, you know, inner city school. So it wasn't, um, you know, it was like combat pay, you know? Mm -hmm. um, so, but I always knew that I wasn't taking home a hundred thousand dollars, right? I mean, the government takes you know, like a half of it. So when I, when I was making, you know, like two star is, is a full-time income, right? So when I hit two star, it was like, it was like jackpot, right? Like I'm literally making pretty much the same amount as I'm making in my full-time job because of the tax benefits. Right. Right. And and how long yep. did it take you to get to two star after you'd hit one star? So my first year was I made an additional $7,000. Then my second year, I think I said this, I don't remember if I did this on this call, but it was about 13, 15,000. Mm -hmm. um, and then my, my third year was when I hit um, 23,000. Right. Right. And then my fourth year was 64,000. Mm -hmm. And then, then my fifth year was like insane. 
Yeah. Like multiple yeah. hundreds insane? My over 900. <laughs> I remember oh, calling my man. Mother. What did you do? So I want to get into I, that. I want to get into that. Yeah. What? Because I know you were on an inside leg and you had two teams to build. And so like mad respect for you. What did you do to make that okay. happen? And, you know, and what, I mean, the other ultimate thing we hope to get to, of course, is what have you created and what can you thereby impart upon us that, you know, that the people that want that, um, that want success can, can get on those tracks. Okay. So, um, let me just, I, we got, I got to watch the time because I have my team, my system call at nine 30, which you guys can all plug into. Um, how would they do that? Just so we don't forget later on. Um, I'm going to have to share the link in, uh, the ER shred. Group. Okay. Is that cool. where you, or you want me to send it directly to you? No, that that's fine. Okay. Um, I'll do that. Just give, tell me at like nine 23, nine 23. <laughs> you got it. So, uh, this way I can share it and then you could jump on. Um, and actually the call that I'm doing at nine 30 is our system on how to get started in the business. So it's perfect timing. Perfect. Um, so one of the, so the thing that, that, um, that I did in the beginning. So everyone was very supportive and, um, helpful as far as isogenics, but what I didn't have was a simple system and being in education, um, my mind operates in structure and organization and simplicity. Right. So, I mean, I worked with teenagers, so, um, so I wanted to keep things simple and, uh, I mean, I barely know how to use my phone, so uh, I don't want to complicate anything, right? <laughs> uh, so I thought to myself, well, okay, people would say, just go in your back office and there's tons of training back there. And I was like, yeah, there's tons of training back there. And it was overwhelming. And I thought, no, I, 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 my brain doesn't function this way. I need something, just, I need a blueprint, right? I need a blueprint on how to do this. And then I have to wrap my mind around it, right? Because you can have the how-tos, but if you don't have the mindset, it's not going to work, right? So, right. so I said, all right, I need, I need a system on how to present isogenics. And, and Cameron Howard taught that with the, Carol Taylor's all-in-one-business.net. So I kind of followed exactly what he did, except I, you know, I tweaked it to what would work for me. And so we did. You showed a before and after picture, you showed a video, and then you, you, you know, you asked questions and you listened, and then you offered recommendations. And that's, that was the system. Um, and then I said, okay, well, I need a system on how to coach someone. And it's not just about me, right? If I'm going to build a team, I need to be able to teach somebody something simple so that they're not overwhelmed because most people live a life of overwhelm to begin with, right? They don't need something else to overwhelm them. Uh, and this business is not complicated. You, you, people tend to complicate it. So, all right, I need a system on how to coach people because that was really important to me. I'm not just going to have somebody get a box and tell them to read the instructions and not educate. Like the, the most important thing is which, what I love about ER Shred is we educate people on health, right? Because yeah, I mean, that's just what we do. Otherwise, we don't have a business. <laughs> so, all right. So how to present, how to coach somebody, then how to build on social media. And um, I I always tell people this. I, if it wasn't for this business, I would not be on social media. I'm a very private person. You know, most people don't know much about me. <laughs> and I, that's just the way, I, right? And so, so be it. <laughs> but um, if I wanted to build a business, I had to get on social media. And it was really uncomfortable and I was a hot mess. And I was, I mean, I would literally text, I would message my sister thinking it was a private message and it would be on her wall. And she would text me and she's like, what are you doing? Everyone can read that. I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> so it was, I, you know, I, it was like a big learning curve for me. So uh, I had to have a system. 
I, I, I needed a system. I needed some kind of structure where people weren't going to think I'm verbally vomiting all over them about isogenics, which I did in the beginning, right? I didn't know any different. Right. So I came um, um, with a, a Kurt Molly who helped me tremendously with social media. And then I'm like, okay, now I need a, a system on how to get someone started in the business. Like, what do people do? How do you train people to... You know, I need a step, step one, step two, step three. Um, and and really that's that's what and how to enroll someone. We have so our systems are how to present, how to coach someone, how to build on social media, how to get someone started in the business, and um how to enroll and walk somebody through their back office. Cause the last thing that you want is for someone screaming at you that they got an auto ship or a subscription and they didn't know about it. So I want to alleviate all of the pain and suffering of that. Right. So right. it's my response. So that's, that's what I created in order to have duplication and simplicity in, in my business. How many people, I mean, not an exact number, but like how many people have you been able to um, support in creating full-time incomes? Do you have any idea? Well, we have, I think we have 18 or 19 millionaires on our team now. Wow. Yeah. Wow. That's amazing. Um, yeah. So, That's amazing. and then, you know, we have uh, six figure, multiple six figure income earners. I mean, you know, we- uh... You've killed it. You've, you've absolutely killed it. Um, you're legendary. Can I ask you, what, what's the, the means whereby you share the information? You mentioned calls. Um, is there, there's also like what, like a back office or something like that um, where you host this information? Yeah, so on my website, on our team website, which I'll, I'll post for you guys. And there's a password for the systems. Um, you can watch like the, the recorded Zoom of each system. So you, you know, like, which is, all right. So teacher, you know, and me is like, okay, so some people learn visually, some people learn auditory and, you know, other people learn you know, like tactually. So I wanted to make sure that I had all the styles in there. So you can watch the Zoom and you can, or you can print something, you know, like everything is there for each system. Yeah. There's, there's no guessing. There's no like, what should I do? How do I do this? It's all there. You can either listen to it. You could print it. I utilize both. Like even when I, I just did a back, um, a box walkthrough today. And of course I pull it up on my phone because 14 years later, it doesn't matter. I don't want to forget anything. And I want to show the person on the other end how simple it is for me to walk them through it. And they Wonderful. have their sheet. So it's it's teacher, student, to, student, teacher. Like it's a constant teacher, student. Very cool. Does it, does the system that you talk about and your strategy, does it teach people um, how and when? And, you know, because I think that's one of the biggest hangups is at what point do I talk about the opportunity. Um, yeah, well, so um, we do that on our presentation call. Okay. Um, but, you know, when I walk, well, now the back office is a little different, right? Because we yeah. have preferred customers. But we, I mean, back in the day, Sean, we had to get everybody's social security number, right? And we used right. to like, we, I mean, talk about, uh, you know, challenging right because right. people are like what do you do that for i'm like oh it's like a cost you know account like and then all of a sudden it's like wait what are you talking about you know like but why and then it was we were like you just have to be i have to put on it you just have to be casual about it and get it you know because we knew that if i do this can you see me <laughs> you're you're kind of like tipped sideways dude all right I'm just going to hold it. Oh, no. Um, anyway, my arm's going to get tired. No, I'll be fine. Um, if uh, we knew on the other end, right, that they would start banking volume. Mm -hmm. And so we wanted to make sure that they were going to get that volume so that when they did have people that wanted to do this, they would, be, they would benefit financially, right? Mm -hmm. But 
you know, and so, so we always tell people, and I got this from Susan Sly, you know, um, you're going to love the products and you're going to get amazing results and a couple things will happen. I would be more than happy to help your friends and family, or I can teach you how to, you know, make some extra money. I don't like to say, get your products paid for. Um, cause that's like, doesn't excite me. Right. Like totally. I'm going to use the products regardless. So like, I like to give people something more emotionally attached, tangible, because in the beginning, you don't know that you're going to love the products. Right. So point, yeah. I want to say, you know, is there something you want that, or you can't do because you don't have the money. If I could show you and they, I ask questions if they say this and, I, and then I, you know, I keep probing it's, it's, it's important to, um, to ask questions and then listen. Totally. Um, so what we'll do then, you are going to post up your information for your call that is, you're talking about in like 10 minutes from now, correct? Yep. Okay, so you'll post that up and then maybe in a separate post, you'll, you'll put up um, maybe like, because you guys do ongoing calls, don't you? We, uh, our calls are Mondays, our system calls. So we take those systems and we put them in rotation. So it's, and it's, we open it to Q and A at the end, okay. um, specifically on that system. And then Tuesday nights are our leadership call, but we also do a, a Tuesday virtual launch that is live um, on my Facebook, but we have a page. I'll put that in as well. Cool. And anybody can now keep in mind this is where the flexibility comes in right it's not all er shred right so it's collagen it's you know 30 day value pack premium pack um and it's a business and then we do a business one so we kind of put all of those in rotation so two before you know two nutritional and then one collagen and then one business right but it's a it's like an op meeting right it's like a virtual op meeting and we have a person who shares interviews and then the person you know sharing their story cool cool so that's, so that's open to everyone oh thank you so much so you'll give us an idea of direction in terms of here's how you access the trainings the guides or whatever and here's the calls that you guys can leverage and you know, then it's just a matter of us, you know, just kind of plugging in. Yeah. And I'm, and when I post the, the uh, website, our team site, now keep in mind this, our team site is um, it's not like, it's not like bells, you know, rainbows and butterflies. It's a teaching tool. Right. <laughs> so it's a resource website, right? So you'll see when you, when you go there, we have a section called welcome new cleansers. We actually added the ER shred on there. Um, directs people right to your your video and then also your Facebook group um, and then we have the protocol on there but it's a section called welcome new cleansers and it's for the you know product consumers and then we have I mean, you'll see it we have a, a ton of, of information okay but so with that said I I want to give you an opportunity to to just get settled for your call and put that that link out is there anything that you would like to say in closing well, I want to, I, I do want to say one thing about the, the business because, um, you know, a lot of people have a poor money mindset, right? And so it's always the transaction of taking money or credit card or whatever, right? We were not taking cash, but we never expect to walk into a store and buy something and not have a transaction. We expect to have to pay for it, right? And people want that item service because it's going to benefit them in some way. Right. And like, for me, if I like, where would people be so many people or health wise and financial financially, if I didn't open my mouth and shout at the top of my lungs, I have something that you could benefit from, you know, I mean, it would be horrible. It's not being a good person. <laughs> it's just not being a good person to, to keep like people will say, oh, I just want to wait till my results. And then maybe I'll, I'll, I'll think about telling someone. And I'm like, but it's not about you, right? It's, 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 you have thousands of other stories that you could share that, you know, and if someone didn't share it with you, you wouldn't be here right now. So for me, it's like selfish. If 
same the ER shred. I mean, I can't tell you how many people I'm, I'm probably people are sick of hearing me, you know, <laughs> I know my family might be, but <laughs> that, so, you know, it's like, um, you have something that could benefit somebody health wise and, uh, financial stress is, um, the silent killer in many, many lives. Mm -hmm. Um, and so we have, uh, a duty to, to, for ourselves to have a better life and to help other people have a better life and take control of our, our lives. So that's, I would say, you know, get your, get your, wrap your mind. Um, there's a lot of books out there. I can even post those money, you know, about money mindset. Um, there's one very thin one called money's not the problem you are, mm. um, based on like law of attraction. Um, and it's really, it's like, you could read it in like an hour, not even that's how, how short it is. Um, but money mindset, because, um, once you get that junk out of your head, um, it's a lot easier to, to help people with the business. Mm, thank you so much. That's awesome. All right, Alexis, I'm going to let you go so that you can get that post out real quick before you start your okay. call. And I just want to, I'm going to open up. I just want everybody to throw swords up at you and love on you because you are so amazing. You guys, if you're grateful for Alexis, throw them up there. Tell her, <laughs> Thanks, guys. Me, let her know you're Thanks grateful. Much. Thank Rock. you so much, Alexis. Alexis. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Awesome. Alexis. Thank you so much. Thank you, Alexis. Thank, Thank you. That was fantastic. Fabulous. I, I'm going to let her hop off. I hope you guys can all get on there in six minutes. It sounds like she's going to go put that in the ER shred group. So hopefully you guys are all members there. Um, and uh, that way, you guys, we're very fortunate. I, I hope you can feel that. I hope you can feel that we're very fortunate and that this wasn't some forced thing. This was like a very flowy thing. Um, very cool thing, very flowy and very natural. So very grateful for um, everybody that's here tonight. It says a lot. It means a lot. And we want this success for all, all of you guys. You deserve it. You're all, God, you're all the best of people. So thank you so much. We'll see you guys soon. Uh, hopefully you can get on the call tonight. We'll catch you later. Oh, and Crystal has, my wife, Crystal has a mindset call on Thursday night. So she's been preparing a lot for that. If you guys want to check that out, that'll be in the group as well. Thursday night. Uh, Good night, everyone. Thank Pacific. you. Thanks, Thank guys. Thanks, Sean. Good night. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Happy anniversary. Happy birthday. Thank you. 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 Thank you.